up from all their relations and we go to London. The image of the good-natured simpleton abroad in a world of spivs and smoothies has always been popular with northern comics and in his early screen roles Sandy Powell milked it for all it was worth. So did George Formby and many others. It all confirmed southern suspicions about the intellectual climate up there in slag heap land. Uh, turned out nice again, doesn't it? Yes, it's turned out just right, I think. That was lucky you helped me in, wasn't it? You said it was lucky. Been unlucky if I'd have missed it, wouldn't it? Mm, it would have been a tragedy. Going to London? Yes, I'm on the stage, you know. I'm a comedian. Oh, you're a comic, are you? Mm. Yes, oh, I'll make them laugh all right. Oh, they split their sides laughing at me. You know, at the concerts we have round our way, you know. Well, there's me and Billy Gill, you know, he's a singing collier. We're the biggest stars, you know. Yes. Oh, you can always get your money's worth out of me. It was my mother's ambition to move away from Rotherham, where she was born, where I was born, you know, to spread out a bit and get on tour in somewhere or other. Well, we went to see Leo Fritz. He said, uh, I've heard from Scott and Whaley, and they say a very good comic, and your mother's a fine performer. He said, now I'll see if I can fix you. He said, somewhere to be seen. He said, uh, I know. He said, I'll give you a week at the Hippodrome Rotherham. <laughs> where we've been trying all my life to get away from. Turn out nice again. What do you want? Oh, I've just dropped in to see if I could help. Of course, if you're busy, I'll not butt in. Hey, you. Hello. Get the stuff off those baskets. Take it upstairs. All right. I don't. For many young hopefuls, starting on the stage often meant sweeping it, or worse. But one theatre manager who offered Sandy a job as baggage boy was politely told what to do with it. Sandy Powell kept his professional dignity from the off. Sandy was an artist. The money started to come in. Sandy topped the bill at the Palace Theatre Blackpool when he was only 18. He was in demand for pantomimes. Then came records, radio, and the birth of his famous catchphrase. Hello, everybody. Oh, no. I used to do an hour's show in those days. That's before any series and before Arthur and Bandwagon. <laughs> and now, Mr. Powell, tell us in your own words, what happened after you won the 16,000 pounds? Well, after I had recovered from the shock, I realized I had inherited a great responsibility. And then, Mr. Powell, I resolved not to drink alcoholic liquors, smoke expensive tobacco, or play games of chance. Very praiseworthy indeed. Uh, and what do you intend to do now? I'm not going to read any more of this rubbish. I'm going to have a jolly good time. Can you hear me, Mother? This was a line in the sketch. It wasn't meant to be a catchphrase at all. It was just a line in the sketch. And as I was talking, I now and again said, Can you hear me, Mother? I dropped my script on the floor, right in the middle of it, you see, instead of insensible, pinning it together. Picking it up, I had to fill in, get all the pages up, said this again, and then on with the sketch. That was on a Saturday night. At the present moment, we are surrounded by nothing but weather, which you've got to have here, whether you want it or whether you don't. Can you hear me, Mother? When we got to Coventry on the Monday with the Hippodrome Coventry, and the manager came round to me at the band call, he said, uh, oh, Sandy, you'll do that tonight, won't you? Uh, say it. 
I said, say what? He said, uh, can you hear me, mother? I said, why? He said, everybody's uh, saying it. Oh, I said, I don't know. I said, well, all right, I'll say it if, if it'll please you. But I, I said, nothing funny about it. Right? It's well tried. So I went on and said, can you hear me, mother? And the whole building all said it with me, everybody in the theatre. Now, that was in the early 30s, and it's, uh, it just stuck, and uh, it's been me ever since. I'm Sandy, the film star, the greatest of them all. For my handsome features, all the ladies have to fall. They say at making love, I'm the best they've ever seen. I'm Sandy, the film star, the idol of the screen. How's my dog? Oh, the dog, oh, the dog, oh, it's had a bit of an accident, you know, the dog. Had an accident? Yes, he, he got burnt, you know. Got burnt? Yes, the dog got burnt. Oh, is it, is it in pain? Oh, it isn't in pain. No? It's dead. Sandy made eight full-length films and several shorts. Some of them, like this one, were film versions of his comedy records. Yeah, you see, it was in the garage, you see. Yes, and of course, yes. any dog, I mean, not only your dog, but anybody's dog, running yes. about in a garage, you see. Yes, yes. If a garage is on fire, naturally... Garage dog... on fire? Oh, yes. yes. But how did that happen? Well, now, you see, this is the point, you see. I think, you see, the car was outside the garage. Yes, yes, see, yes. Well, when the car exploded... Car see? exploded? Yeah, oh, oh, the car's gone, you know. Do you mean to tell me my car's burnt? Oh, absolutely. The car's burnt to a cinder, the car is, Good yes. gracious. And no. th that's what caught fire to, to the garage, you but, see. <laughs> oh, but how did that happen? Ah, there you are again, you see. Yes, but... How did the car catch fire? Uh, that, now, that, now, that's what everybody wants to know. Well, I yes. think, you see, you see, the car was outside the house, you see. Yes. Now, of course, naturally, if a house is on fire, you see... What? The flames must have caught the car, you see, which caused the explosion, do, you see. Do you mean to tell me my house is on fire? Oh, of course, you didn't know that your house had been burned, did you? Been burnt to the ground? Oh, your house is absolutely burned to a cinder. Oh, but... Oh, but how did that happen? Now, well... There you are again, you see. But I can't understand it. Ah, I think, myself, I think it must have been he caught fire through one of the candles. Candles? Yes. What candles? The candles round the coffin. Round the coffin? Yes. Whose coffin? Oh, of course, you didn't know that your mother-in-law was dead, did you? My mother-in-law dead? Oh, oh, your, oh, your, your mother-in-law is dead, yes, she, well, she's gone. Yes. How, how did that happen? Ah, th there you are again, you see. Yes, but what caused the mother-in-law's death? Well, I think, I, the only thing I can think of, it must have been the terrible shock. Shock? Yes. What shock? Oh, of course, you didn't know that your wife had run away with the chauffeur, did you? What? My wife had run away with a chauffeur? Oh, yes, they've gone, I have. Oh, but Sandy, this is impossible. Well, oh, I are. say, I say. Wife ran away with a chauffeur? Yes. Oh, the dog's burnt, the yes. garage is burnt, the car's burnt, the house is burnt to the ground, yes. and the wife's run away with a chauffeur. Yes, but apart from that, everything is just the same as you left it. Uh. Many comedians have explored the comic possibilities of doing classic stage routines badly. Tommy Cooper has made a career of it. One of Sandy Powell's most popular acts is this, The Hopeless Magician. It's no surprise to learn that professional conjurers are among his most appreciative audiences. One of the acts didn't turn up to go on at Chiswick Empire, and on the bill we had Jack Demain, who was marvellous with the cards and cigarettes, and billiard balls, and he had the cloak and tall hat, silver mounted walking stick. So I went in his dressing room. I said, Jack, will you help me? I said, we've got to fill in five or six minutes because one of the terms hasn't turned up. He said, yes, what do you want? 
I said, well, give me your cloak and your hat and stick. And I went on with a cigarette and uh, just uh, messed about for a few minutes. And there again, it uh, turned out to be uh, quite a good item for me. I first met Sandy Powell at the Mancunian Film Studios. He was like a very young, benign Father Christmas. I was petrified of everybody in the studio, and there he was. I never stopped laughing throughout the whole of that film. I was brought in to play Sandy's wife, and as I was only 21 at the time and a bit raw, I thought, well, how's this going to work? But may I tell you, I played four parts in that film, all with the same face and the same hair. So she played the part and made herself look more like the age of myself, you see. After we finished the picture, I went on tour in Variety, and she came with me uh, doing the feeding in the sketches. And she got big money in those days, too. Twelve pounds a week. I mean, <laughs> she's getting over double that now, I think. Mean. You know, Martha, I haven't had a real meal <clears throat> since I left. Uh, what, uh, what's this supposed to be? Nice bit of spoons, Pam. I've been abroad for five years and you've got the... N I don't want that. Oh, you haven't gone to the bed in five years. No, and that hasn't. I remember that piece before I went away. Oh, no, same old friend. You're always looking for trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. I want some food, that's all. Anyway, I can't eat it like this. Give me some bread. You've got no bread. Well, give me some toast. So oh. you haven't altered. Do you want a row? Oh, why do you want a row? I don't mind. Oh, well, you haven't altered very much yourself, have you? This is very good. All right, we'll have a row. And it'll be a good row, I promise you that. We haven't had one for five years. And I've learned some new words since I've been away, and you're going to hear them all tonight. Now, first of all, I'll put this away before we start. Now, uh, I think we'll take your family tonight, shall we? I think we'll start with the favourite, your mother. Then there's your father. My father's a gentleman. Your father's a gentleman. You remember before we got married, your father came to me, he said, Sandy, when you and Martha get married, I'm going to settle something on you. Well, didn't he? Yes, your mother. Every lunchtime, he'd say to me, uh, we don't want to go in that stuffy place and, and have chips, do we? Let's go out and get a bit of fresh air. And it was summer. So we went into a little park opposite and sat down on a bench with our sandwiches, you see, and our bottle of lemonade or whatever it was. And we were sitting there listening to the birds and taking the sunlight. And a, 
Lady came up and looked at Sandy very hard for a long moment and she says, E, do you know, you're the living image of that Sandy Powell. And there was a pause and he said, Aye, missus, I wish I had his money. I've always remembered it and I think it's the showstopper of all time. She went away quite happy, knowing to herself that he wasn't Sandy Powell at all. <laughs> Most comedians hope at some time in their career that there will be something which they can be remembered by, and some of them are fortunate enough to develop what's called a classic of comedy. Uh, Jimmy James is one of them, Ken Dodd perhaps is another one of today, and Danny Willis of today. And so if you can have one of those, you're very, very fortunate. Sandy Powell is doubly fortunate because he's managed to develop two classics, one of which is The Magician, and the other one, of course, is this incredible ventriloquist act. Now tell me, what are you going to sing for the ladies and gentlemen? And don't you sing the same thing you say? What did he say? He said you sing the ones you sing the same. I wish I'd have got a bigger moustache. I was running my own show. And my agent had sent me a ventriloquist, which said was very good. He was shocking. He was a stinker. He didn't go well, didn't serve my purpose at all. So uh, I said to Mike Lyon, my agent, I said, don't send me another one of these. He said, I'm afraid you've got one next week. I think we were going to Manchester or somewhere. And another bad one. And that went on three weeks. I thought, now, how can I get my own back on these fellas? I'm paying them good money, and they've got no idea. They're not good vents. Their material's bad. So I bought the little doll. I think I paid a fiver for it from uh, Davenport to the country in the shop, you know, business. Bought this and took it on with me. Only a two-minute gag just to sort of have a go at these uh, bad ventriloquists. And it gradually built up and built up until it turned out to, to be my living for years. Now, tell me, Sonny, where do you live and where were you born? I was gone in the junction. <laughs> Wolverhampton! <laughs> oh, I wish I'd have said lead. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't Czechoslovakia. <laughs> yes, the finest blade in the world. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, when you're part <laughs> I know his face and I can't place it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, tell me, wait. <clears throat> I don't need that. <laughs> well, everybody knows how it's done. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wu. Watch out. <laughs> thank you. That's it. Now tell me, what are you going to sing? I don't want to sing. He says he doesn't want to sing. Now you'll be sorry. I let the little girl sing. <laughs> Peters and Lee. <laughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> you've heard me do the male voice. Now the female voice. <coughs> Now tell me, my dear, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> I still have to have an operation. In films, some of them are not so good. They were quickies compared with the great films of today, but they were great. In, they must be kept in context. They were great in, and, and entertained people particularly up north, although it was a great shock to distributors to find that his films were going very well in the South. They were very dubious about that. Do you want me to sing, Alice? Yes. All right, well, Alice, if I do sing, will you promise me one thing? What's that? If ever we have a row, you won't throw it up in my face, will you? No, darling. All right. When I was a right young lad, my father said to me, Seems to me that's growing up, now what's that going to be? It all depends upon yourself, it's only up to thee. 
I won't say much to thee again, but take a tip from me. Hear all, see all, say no. Hate all, sup all, pay no. It's a long time remembered from January to December. So hear all, see all, say no. Hate all, sup all, pay no. And if ever thou dost summon for no, always do it for yourself. I can remember my mother saying to me when uh, when I started to to do well. She said, uh, well, you've done very, very well. She said, when I think how we all started, she said, you can always be proud to say that your mother was born in the biggest house in Rotherham. Oh, I said, I'll remember that. I said, did it have a name? She said, yes, the workhouse. And that's absolutely true. My mother was born in the, in the workhouse in Rotherham. It's a grand old world And there's always time for helping one another So I just keep singing, can you hear me mother? With the sky of blue and a pal like you It's a grand old world Next Monday at 5, the life and work of another northern comic, Sidney Howard.